It's a different spin on the concept of hitting the road, dockless bike sharing. I think it's really good. Um, and it's really convenient for people that, I mean, right now, like if I want to save up for a bike, I can while I can use this in a day to day basis. The concept is simple. You use a smartphone app to unlock and rent a bike. When you're done, you leave it wherever you want without having to park it at a station. The bike has a GPS on it, so we know where the bikes are. Uh, and then because the lock is, is secure and locks two things, uh, we have really good accountability. So we know which user uh, last used the bike and where they locked it up at the end of the trip. Um, and so if there's anything that goes wrong, if, if the bike wasn't locked properly, uh, we can go to that last user and hold them accountable for that. In theory, yes, but it hasn't always gone as planned. In China, the rented bikes have popped up in random places, clogging city sidewalks and streets and causing traffic accidents. Some say the bike sharing industry has grown too big too fast. When it first took off a few years ago, competitors flooded the market. Since then, demand hasn't kept up with supply, and properly parked bikes get dumped into so-called graveyards, creating towering eyesores. For its part, the Chinese government is considering measures to rein in the industry, such as fining companies which don't properly control their supplies of bikes and barring companies from entering already saturated cities. There must be a responsibility in market supervision and management. Meanwhile, there must be some restrictive conditions with the invisible hand of the market well matched with the visible hand of the government. But it's really the question about how do we do that right. Toby Sun is co-founder and CEO of Limebike, which put its first dockless bikes on California roads last June. The state, along with major U.S. cities, has limited the number of companies that can operate and how many bikes it can offer. I think it's definitely, you know, tougher than it is in China, but I think that's a good thing. The difference is that you've seen things that are unsustainable in other markets. The degree to which it's figuring out what is the right amount, growing it based on data, it allows for us to create a defensible market that really is one that's serving the people best and allowing for the best product to win. A tricky balancing act for the two-wheelers. Francis Coe, CGTN.